welcome back to the studios, ladies and gentlemen. So I've got some exciting news for you today. I just got this package delivered from Amazon from a company called Captron. I want to open this up for you. Here it is. And they have sent me uh, some water brushes to go ahead and take a look at, to test out and let me know, let them know what I think about these. And I want to open these up with you here and uh, I'll let you see them just as I open them. Now, the thing that's different about these is they've got a push button. You've seen me do reviews of uh, my little pen brushes, uh, water brushes. I like these a lot. They're, they're pretty hard uh, here in the center where you would squeeze them to get your water out, but they come to a nice point. They're in a couple of different sizes like this. I like these a lot. You've seen me do a review of the Kiritake uh, water brushes. I like these, uh, they don't come to quite as nice a point as I would like, uh, but they're pretty nice. And I've done these, which are the Pentel ones. I've got these in a number of different sizes. Uh, and I like these too, but it's really squishy uh, in the middle here. And uh, it's easy for a lot, a lot, a lot of water to come out of these. And most recently, you've probably seen me do a review of these ones, which are probably the closest to the Captron ones that I have. Uh, but let me dig into these for just a second. Ooh, there we go. Gonna open these up. Here we go. And let me just get a big one out here. So you can see immediately, let's see, this is probably the biggest one of these. You can see they're very similar. Uh, some nice coloring on here. And if we open the tops, I'm betting uh, that they're going to be about the same. So let me get this wet so we can do a comparison. There we go. Hasn't been used, but it, they look. the bristles look pretty much identical out there, other than the fact that I've used this one and it's gotten a little bit of stained with use. But right here is the big thing. This has a little push button in there that will hopefully... Uh, allow you to meter the water out a little bit better than uh, just squeezing this one. This actually says push right on the side of it here, but uh, that's a little tough. And uh, when you squeeze this, the whole side of the thing collapses and potentially a lot of water could come out on those. So that's what's kind of nice about these. I'm looking forward to using these. Let's get them out and see what our sizes look like. Uh, let's see, so I think this was the biggest one. I've got here set it off to the side maybe yep a little bit smaller there we go and oh we've got a third one of these a flat brush there we go let's see and large medium medium large medium and a small one of these or fine medium and bold I don't know uh, here are these brushes and you can see, well, these look terrible. They look terrible. You can see, let's see, these are a similar size to the ones I've got here. Where was my other size? Let's see, that's big, that's big. I've got three of these. Large, medium, medium, small. Maybe that one's a large. Medium, small, anyways. I've used this set a lot, like I said, whoop, yep, this set, and I like these. Uh, they do from time to time push out a lot of water. Uh, let me get these other old ones out of here. So this is the first time I've opened these up to take a look at these. I can't wait to get a start on these. Uh, I'm going to test these out for just a little while, and then I'm going to come back and show you what I learned about these and how nicely they work. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, we'll see you in a, well, in a couple of minutes of video time, but maybe in two, three, four days of real time and uh, come back and try these out uh, with a little demonstration for you. Until then, see ya. Okay, so I'm back and I've been using my Captron uh, water brush, uh, brush pens, water brush pens here for 
I don't know, a couple of weeks and I've got some information back for you. I thought I would share some stuff with you, some comparison to some other brushes. I'm going to bring these in from over here, show you a couple of pictures I've painted and maybe we'll even paint our own picture here. So I think I showed you in my intro, I did that, wow, as soon as I first got these, how these are nice. They have a little push button mechanism in here that allows it to dispense water in a kind of a predetermined amount. Um, I've got these as a comparison and I bought these, oh, eight months ago, nine months ago, something like this. And these are pretty good. I really like these. But what I found is with these Captron brushes, um, the amount of water that you can squeeze out really is a lot uh, it's a lot more uh, specific. You can do an exact amount more. And here's the, here's the issue with this brush. If I push the sides of this, it's going to squeeze out and squeeze the whole length of this barrel here. And it might squeeze one way, one time. It might squeeze a little bit different. Maybe I'm holding it back here instead of up here. And I'll get a different amount of water out. With these brushes, what I found uh, with all of the paintings that I've done is I can squeeze this button in the middle It's not gonna go right now. There it goes and I'll get a specific amount of water out every time and that helps To regulate the flow that helps to know exactly how much water I'm getting out. So I'm gonna do a little test. I'm gonna move my uh, Captron bag off to the side. Actually, let me do this. Uh, I think I've got a couple of pictures of these I'm going to try to put in. My kids went to a part of pottery class and while I was waiting for them to finish using the the wheel and the stuff they're doing by hand I saw some stuff on the table and I just decided to give a quick paint uh, of them. Uh, this is a quick these are both really quick like an hour for both of these. This is a, a pottery rabbit that was there. I did that with these Captron brushes and this was kind of a I don't know, a little planter box or something. You put stuff in. Anyways, it was really whimsical in the shape of a cat or a cat design. Also done with these. This is a much tighter style, you know, stay in the lines, don't go outside the lines. This I did really loose everything all at once. At some point, this whole rabbit down here was nice and wet. Uh, and so these brushes work out really well both ways. I think I've got some pictures of these I'm gonna to try to put in the video. Uh, let me set this off to the side for just a second. Come back to a piece of paper here that we can work with and I can show these to you. So I'm just going to grab a small uh, pad, uh, pad, a thing of paints here. This happens to be uh, Prima Watercolors Tropicals set. Got my color card here so I know what everything is. I'm going to preload, let's see, a couple of these with water. Uh, I used one of these big ones. And I should say, I really like these. There, it comes, the set comes with three round brushes of different sizes, large, medium, and, and small. And I really like these. I, and I ended up using these for just about everything. And it comes with three, one, two, oh can't get the top off. Three flat brushes. Also large, medium, and small. And, uh, and I tried to use these in a couple of different uh, paintings. I mostly use this one. You can see the color has uh, is, is gotten stained in there a little bit. I kind of, I, I, I'll admit, I kind of had a little problem with this, but it was the same problem I had with these. When I use a, a flat brush like this, I'm used to having something that comes out to a really fine point. I don't know if you can see if I hold it up. It comes to a very fine point. I don't even know what brush this is. Catalina Madison. Uh, but anyways, it comes to a very fine point and these ones don't quite. You can just see it stays fat there. If I have one problem with anything in this set, that's it. But I want to I want to do a little bit of a test. I'm just going to pre-wet these, 
I'm gonna push a little water through on each of them so we know it's going. There's one there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. I hope you can see in my hand as I do that, and I'll try this with these flat brushes too. I want you to be able to see this. Oops, come on. There we go. Uh, a little squeeze and it goes right in there. The reason I'm getting these, whoop, the, the, the larger brushes, you do have to squeeze a little bit harder. I should say the reason I want to get these wet first of all is because if I just if I just hold it up dry and I squeeze it, it's just going to wet the the bristles. But if it's already damp, it'll push the water straight on through. I hope you can see. One squeeze, it comes right out, and you can control it better than you can with let's say these brushes, which are very similar. Ugh! One and these are hard. Some of these one squeeze. Two squeezes there before I got anything. One of these that's uh, maybe the small one. One squeeze, and I got a giant puddle of water out there that time. And uh, it just doesn't meter out quite as nicely. But let's do a little comparison. Let's get similar sized brushes. These are similar, and maybe I'll bring in these all look to be roughly the same size. I'm going to use these. So uh, this one is the Pentel brush. I'll bring in one of these too. I don't have any water in this one. Just give me one second. I'm going to dip them into my water here. There we go. This is the Kiritake brush. About the same size. Let's put it there we can see. Uh, this one was an off-brand name. I bought it on eBay. Uh, I've done a review of this. I actually like this one quite a bit because it's nice and small and if you put it in your travel kit, um, the three of them together take up almost no room. And this is... I don't remember who this one is. I got this one off of... This might be Meaden. I got this one off of Amazon. And then, uh, and then our nice Captron brush. So let's do a little, a little showdown here. Um, I'm going to use, I don't know what color I'm going to use. I'm going to use red here. Okay. And I just want to get just the slightest amount on here, just so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so I should have just a little bit amount on here. And I'm going to try to put a little bit of color on my paper here, just so you can see how much water, I'm not even pushing it, this is just gravity. Let's see. And it's just, it holds a lot of water there. God, I'm, I'm not doing good tonight. All right, I'm gonna do the same one uh, with my Pentel, and uh, I like this. Uh, you've seen these before. The problem with these ones is that the water continues to leak out of these. When you turn them upside down, this way, water just leaks and leaks sometimes. Watch, this time it won't. I spilled a little water on there from my hands. Sure, this time it's not doing it. If you give it a little shake, it's gonna re-wet itself and keep right on going. So if you're moving, and when I'm out painting, uh, you know, plein air, oh, it just dripped again. When I'm out painting plein air, I stop and talk to people around me that pass by. And so I'm constantly moving my brush like this. Um, I, I like these, but not great. Plus, this squeeze really easily. Let's see, I'm gonna do this one here. I'm gonna get a little bit of my red, just. And this is the one that's most like the Captron brushes. I would expect it to work just about the same. Not re-wetting it. It comes down, yeah, this is, feels this, pretty much the same to me, but again, this one you have to squeeze it pretty hard. This plastic is pretty hard here to get our water out. And then the, the Kiritake ones, we've all seen these uh, around here and there. I'm going to get this out 
And this has the same problem as the Pentel ones, sometimes even a little bit worse, is that you move them like this, and the water really feeds down through that sponge, really goes down there and down there and down there and down there. I'm just going back to get a little bit more. I'm not even trying to do this. I hope you can see the color still coming out. Even when the color's not coming out, it's still wet, wet, wet down there. Um, so honestly, I don't even use these anymore. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to take these uh, Captron brushes out with me when I go to do any kind of uh, plein air painting. And I thought, since we're trying to do these, since I, I really want to show how these work, that maybe we should do a little painting. I've got one here that I have already drawn. We're going to do a quick one. Here's what my uh, reference photo is. It's a female cardinal. And uh, I'm just going to dive in with this. I'm going to use the largest of the round brushes. And I'm going to get her a little bit wet in here. Just, just like this. There we go, and I'm going to grab a little bit of my, well, I don't know what color this is. Let's see if you can see it over here. I'm assuming it's an ochre. Prima doesn't tell us what color it is. They just give it to us by a name or a number in many cases. I don't recall what the number of that one is, but on my card, here, let me zoom this out just a little bit. There we go. On my card here, I can see what the color is and how it's going to spread a little bit. I'm going to do something like that, and I'm just going to bring this all the way down. It's about time for me to give it a little shot of water. There we go. It's going to help me bring this. Right on down, get a little bit more up here. There we go, and I'm just going to move over to some of this color brown. I know this, I'm mixing it off, it doesn't quite fit on the screen. Maybe we can make it fit. There we go, I think we can do that. Just a little bit of this brown over here. Coming up, let me get a, mix a little bit of water. I want a little bit more of this ochre color over here before I get a little bit more of this brown. And I'm going to pre-mix a little bit of this orange in here. Looks to me like she's got a little bit of orange color up here. I'm just going to drop a little bit of that on, and then I'm going to go to right back to my ochre and brown mix. There we go, I'm happy with that for a first layer. Maybe, maybe I'm happy with that for a first layer. I'm gonna darken this up a little bit. There we go, I think I'm more happy with it now. So a little bit of this brown right over there. And you can see, I can get into a really pretty tight place with this. Just it comes to a fantastic point, all of the three do. <clears throat> the three of these and this one all come to a fantastic, wonderful, wonderful point. Whoop. Here we go. I should say, if you do go to the water, it's a habit now. If you do go to water and you bring it back, you better tap it off. You better get some of the, the water off of your brush because it does hold quite a lot. And now I'm going to have a run in here unless I come back 
and try to fix it. I might still have one. But we're going to go like this and see what we can do to, to get that out. Something like that. Let me just dry this off a little bit. Back it up that way. There we go. Now, I don't have a gray in here, really. I'm going to use some of this brown. And I'm going to use some of this blue and make my own gray. There we go. Nice, warm, grayish color. I'm going to start on her wing back here. Just like that, maybe a little bit down here too. And I've got some nice reddish brown. I'm going to try to stay out of the water up, up here. I'm going to try to stay out of that from now on. I don't want to get too much into that. I will dab off on a paper towel when I need to. There we go, and I've got a lot of this gray down here, so I don't know, right in here, I'm gonna start it. It's gonna come under this branch. I know somebody's gonna leave me a comment saying, why are you doing it that way? I can't believe you're painting it in this order. I don't know why you're not painting the background first or why you're not finishing this part first. Which is okay, which are all fair questions to ask. But my answer is gonna be, because when I picked up my paintbrush and started to paint, this is kind of how I felt like it should go. I, uh, if you watched a few of my paintings, uh, you know I don't always follow the watercolor rules of painting. Start with the background, then paint. Start with the background, then paint the foreground, then paint the main subject, then paint the trees, then paint the shadows. I think that's how it goes. And I don't, I don't always subscribe to that. I, that's, it's a good general rule of thumb, but um, I don't know. Sometimes you just have to paint how the mood takes you, I think. All right, so I'm mixing up a little darker gray here. I just put a little purple in that same blue and brown mixture, just to darken it up a little bit, because I want her face here, right around her beak, to be fairly dark. There we go, and I and I and I just want to get to this before. Uh, all my paint dries up here. I already have kind of a, a, a tide line here or a hard water line. And if I can avoid some of it, I'm good with that because uh, to some extent, the feathers all mix together and I don't want I don't want that hard line right there. So I'll do what I can to keep that out just a little bit, not completely out. Okay, I almost went back to, almost went back to the water again. Now I'm going to mix up a little orange in this red. Let's see, maybe a bit more of our orange here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get something similar to this color. It's getting a little thick. I'm just going to give it a little squeeze. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to mix a little yellow in there. Is that a good beak color? I don't... That looks good. That looks good to me.
There we go. Just put it on a just put it on a base layer of color. There it is. And I might be done with this one for right now. I'm going to move to the next brush down, which I think is this one. I should say the the medium and the small on here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the ends. The end sizes are pretty close. The medium one is a little bit longer. There we go. Uh, and I think that's the way I've been telling the difference between the two. Really, is the length of the uh, the brush, the bristles on the brush. I should, should say not the brush itself, but the bristles. I'm going to add just a little bit of detail to her wing up here. Here we go. I'm going to come down through some of that gray, and when I get down to here, I'm going to mix in a little bit of more red. And I'm going to actually mix in a little bit of this blue on the underside of this feather. I want it known that that is the underside in shadow. I'm going to make that blue. I think it should be, I think it should come out a little further than what I've drawn it. Oh, almost, I see. It's such a habit to go up to the water up there. You don't want to do that. <clears throat> there we go. That's close to her feathers there. And I'm going to put in some details down here on her tail. She's got a couple of feathers down here. Something like this up at the top up here. There's a lot more red in it where it comes out. Really light, really light feather lines here. And maybe if you wanted to, just to force it a little bit, maybe a little bit of blue in here. There we go. This is a, and I don't know what color this blue is. Maybe it's cerulean blue that they've got here. It's a pretty nice color blue. It doesn't overtake anything. It won't overtake your painting, I guess is, is what I should say. It's a pretty mild color. I'm going to do that. There we go. I think her tail looks okay to me. I'm going to come, let's see. Yep, perfectly fine to come back up here. Uh, let's see, in her head color up here, I'm going to add a little bit of a couple of feathers. I'm going to go back to a little bit darker brown. It's been so long since I've made a video, I've forgotten how to talk while I paint. I really should. I need to correct that. Actually, what I need to do, I'm doing a little bigger area. I need to go back to uh, my little bit bigger brush here. Oh yeah, now we're covering some, covering some ground. I'm going to mix a little bit of our gray in here. She's got some a lot of gray in here. Just going to spread this out. Some of our, let me make a little bit more gray here. I had this blue and our brown and a little bit of purple in there and a squeeze of water to thin it down just a touch. It looks a little like mud maybe on the, on the screen. I just dropped a little bit of extra blue in it, and now it's a beautiful cold uh, blue-gray. 
Oh yeah. It's pretty thick though. Didn't need quite that much of it. I'm just going to blend that down. I'm going to go right with a full, I'm going to clean my brush, just squeeze it a couple of times. I'm going to go right into this full ochre down here. Let's see, he's got, she, she's got ochre that comes right down here. I'm going to get just a dab of orange in here. Oh, that looks good. I like that. I like that. I like that. I'm going to clean this off. Two squeezes. Totally clean. Run that right in. And I'm just going to let this blend all the way down. Down there. Got to look how we doing on time. We're at 26 minutes. We're doing good. I'm going to go back to my smaller brush. This is the smallest one. Whoop. Nope. This is the medium one, I can tell, because it's still got the same color we were using before. And I'm going to, to just blend this right up to the edge here. I want to... There we go. And then right inside this black area. So we get some of our dark color in here. Maybe I maybe I picked the wrong set. I picked one without a, a true gray or a black in it. Maybe I could have done a little better job. Picking one with <laughs> a darker color in it, but We've got this one, we'll make it work. Actually, it's not that bad anyways. Looks pretty good. Just gonna give a little bit of definition to that beak. I don't wanna do too much to it. I want some of that brightness to stand out. And I am going to, oh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna paint our branch here. I'm going to mix up a different gray for that. I'm going to use green and red. I should have used that. Whoop. Let me wipe this off. Dipped in the wrong one. I'm going to use green and a little bit of this red. And that's kind of the color I'm going to use. I want this gray. Oh, oh. So I used green and red and mixed this color. And I want this color gray to be just a little different than that. You can see this is colder. That's a bit warmer. I've got you focused in on the bird here. And I'm just going to use this. See, that goes behind our bird there. There we go. That goes right like that. And then I'm going to use, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to use this blue. I hope you can see what I'm mixing there. I'm going to use this blue on the bottom. It's cold out. This bird is cold, cold, cold in the winter here. Much like everywhere else in the nation. There we go. And I'm just going to sprinkle in on the top just a little green mark here and there. I don't want it to be too total cold something like that I 
There we go. And I got one last thing. We're gonna. Well, I guess we got two things to do. One is we have to paint an eye on this bird. I'm gonna do it like that, and I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. If you can't see, I left just the smallest bit of white in there. The last thing we need to do is mix up a gray for our background. Well, wrong way. And I'm going to do that with a series of colors. I'm going to keep it very light. I've mixed a little bit of light green in with our gray, this yellow green here. Whatever that color is. There we go. Coming on this side. And I'm using the, the flat brush for this. And there we go right up and around her head that wonderful top knot she's got there I really like that Cardinals really are fantastic birds and on the other side I've turned my page just a little bit to get right in where I need to forgive me forgive me please I'm going to go right on down, 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 down. Just grabbing any of these grays that we've got mixed there. The one thing I don't want to do is make this really dark uh, and take away from our cardinal here. I'm keeping this a little bit lighter, or very light, I guess I should say. In the background, it's just going to be a normal mottled background color. We could put a little bit of directional strokes in here, make it look like it has a little bit of something going on in the background, but not too much. We don't want too much to take away from the focus, which is our bird. And we're almost done. I would take a, if I could find one, a pen. Oh, here we go. I've got a pen. And draw a line, maybe defining her beak, outside of her eye, and maybe just a couple of feather marks here and there to give it a little bit of texture not too much Just there we go. I think that's all I'm going to do with that one. Let me zoom in. Let's see what I'm looking at. And I am going to call her done. So that's it. That's my review on the Captron pen brush water brushes oh I, I like them they're a, they're a step up from the ones I used to use I'm no longer going to use these my daughter will probably really enjoy them uh, the push button really does help meter out the water in a in a nice way and what's more than that when you use these they feel nice in your hand they, you can really grip on these there's no slide no anything like that and they look like they're built really well so I'm, I'm totally stoked about these I love these Capton brushes. I'm going to use them. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed 
finally get another video out to you. Uh, we'll see you back in the studio again next time. Thanks so much. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.